In this presentation, we're going to record an advanced customer payment or a deposit. In other words, we're going to have a payment happen before we do the service or provide the goods. In our case, we're going to have an advanced payment, a down payment on a guitar that will be purchased. Haven't given the guitar at this point in time. We will give it in the future. Here we go with zero. Here we are in our our get great guitars dashboard we're going to be opening up our financial statements here let's open up the trial balance this time we're going to go to the accounting drop down we're going to be opening up our trial balance when that opens up we're going to duplicate the trial balance as is our custom by going to the tab up top right clicking on that tab duplicating that tab let's go on over to our flow chart now we're going to go to quickbooks desktop just to take a look at the flow chart of this we're going to have a prepayment so our story once again will be that uh, well, let's go over the normal process will, of course, generally be that we do the work before we uh, invoice the client, in which case we'll invoice the client and then track the accounts receivable. Or typically we do the work at the same time, like at the cash register. Basically, they buy something and we pay them uh, or we get the money and they pay us at that point in time. We record the sale then. However, there are some cases where an industry wise it's typical in that particular industry or an unusual transaction in another like a no, more normal type of industry where we get paid before we do the work and therefore before we issue the invoice again some industries that that might happen in like if you're a newspaper industry or magazines or now applications where you get paid and then you give the service sometime in the future that's kind of backwards towards the traditional type of industry because usually you got to do the work first before you get the money uh, but some kind of concerts that's another area in our case we have a deposit so we're going to say we're selling a guitar the scenario is someone comes into the store they want a guitar we say hey we don't have it in that color but we'll order it for you in that color however we would like a down payment first just so we know that you're committed to purchasing it so we would like the down payment now they're going to give us the down payment the money before we do the work before we give them the guitar and therefore we're gonna have to record that and then go kind of backwards see how the arrows go on this way we're gonna do this and then like go the other way then we're gonna go backwards and record the invoice afterwards the journal entry when we do that then usually when you have a receive payment usually the journal entry is to decrease the receivable because you had assumed to have entered the invoice before increase in the receivable this would typically decrease the receivable and then record the cash going up in some form or another checking account or into a, a clearing account however if you haven't got the receivables you should be putting it into a liability type of account like unearned revenue or deposits uh, sometimes that's a little difficult sometimes some softwares you have to work around that because what you would like to do is put it in the customer section which is driv driven by accounts receivable so you can match it to the invoice zero has a great uh, system that allows you to basically properly record this as a liability as it should be and uh, be able to attach it to the invoice that you will be creating in the future so we're going to do basically a sales receipt or a receive payment first however we're going to be creating a liability account instead of decreasing the receivable and still be able to track that in kind of like the invoices section so that when we make the invoice later, we'll be able to tie that out. So I'm going to minimize this now that we have our story down and we're going to say that the uh, this is going to be as of February, February 29th, and we'll update that report on the trial balance, the good old TB. Then we're going to go back to the first tab where we'll do the data input and we're going to select the plus button to do that data input. We're going to go down. We're going to say we're going to receive money. We're getting money. Haven't done anything yet, but we're getting money. We're committing to the future to give this person a guitar. The person that came into our store, by the way, is going to be called String Music. That's the customer name. We're going to make this deposit not into our checking account, but into our clearing account here. So we're going to put that into our clearing account so we can batch it up and put it into the bank in the same format that we expect it to be seen on the bank statement. There, we're going to say that we got this deposit uh, from, or this money came from String Music. It's in our store. Representative of String Music is in our store asking for this particular guitar. This is going to be happening on the 21st. We're saying, hey, we don't have the guitar on us, but we'll order it for you if you give us some money now. And they say, okay, we'll give you money now, and you go make that order. To do that, it's not going to be a direct payment. This is the little trick that they have in Zero. this nice little feature. It's going to be going to the prepayment. So this is going to be a prepayment, and that turns the screen to red. We don't have an item because we're not assigning an item right now. This is a deposit of some kind, and we're going to say that we got $300 
$300. And the other account that it's going to be going to, obviously the checking account or in our case clearing account will be going up given the fact it's a receive payment. The other side should be going to some kind of like undeposited funds. I'm sorry, not undeposited. It should be going to some liability like unearned revenue or deposit. We set up one called unearned revenue because that's what my accounting training always drilled in my head for that kind of transaction unearned revenue we got money it hasn't been earned it's a liability it's not earned revenue and then when we do the work when we give them the guitar it will then then be earned we'll take it out of the liability and we'll put it on down to the income statement as revenue at that point so what's this going to do it's going to increase the receive money increasing the clearing account basically the cash we have on hand the other side go into the liability account representing uh money that we owe to somebody we got three hundred dollars we didn't earn it we either owe them the three hundred dollars back or we got to do what we promised to do which is to provide them a guitar at which point we will create an invoice so let's go ahead and record that and see what happens so we're going to record that see if it gives me any error message or any funny thing that i messed up on no i did it perfectly and then i'm going to go to the trial balance over here we're going to refresh or update the trial balance and then we're going to go down to the clearing account. Here's the clearing account. And we should see another 300 that we got uh, in uh, sales here. Not really sale, but we got money for 300 for the deposit increase in the cash we have on the hand. We're going to take it to the bank later on today. So there's the 300. That looks good. Other side is going to be in a liability type of account, representing the fact that we owe the 300 back or we need to be doing the work that we promised to do which was to get a guitar and sell it to them here's the unearned revenue there's the other side there's the other 300. now if we go back to the first tab we can track this information as well if i go down to the dashboard and we know that we want to connect that 300 to an invoice we want to make sure that we can do that later on if we go into the invoices uh, owed to you this isn't an invoice owed to us it's a prepayment but we're tracking it in the same kind of section here. So I want to see all items like invoice items and payments on them. And if we go there, we'll see this payment before the invoice. So just like we did it before, we've got this payment before the invoice. And that's what the little PP stands for. So that means that the next time we make an invoice for string music, it's going to ask us. He's going to say, hey, there's this prepayment of $300. Do, do you want us to apply that out to the invoice? And most likely we'll say, yes, we would like you to apply it out to the invoice. We're not going to do that at this time because what we really wanted at this point is to have that 300 kind of on the books for when we make the financial statements at the end of the time period. So we can see that in the financial statements back to the trial balance so that we can see that unearned revenue, that liability account at the end of the month. That's it for now. Let's go outside.